Hey yo, what's good reader fam? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope that you've been staying warm in this cool autumn weather. And I hope that you've gotten the chance to pet an animal recently, like a dog or a cat. Unless you're allergic. In that case, I'm sorry. Today I'm actually going to be taking a twist on a video that I recently posted, and that was the book Genre Swap, which the more that I thought about it, that video should have been titled Author Genre Swap, but it's a little too late. I'm going to be taking books and reimagining them into different genres. And today's video is being sponsored by Simon & Schuster. Shout out to Simon & Schuster. And again, today's video was inspired by a book that I've been reading recently, and by reading I mean I have been taking my time with this book. I have been reading it like a snail, just as slow as possible, like hello to Turtle Lane, that's the lane that I'm in, and that is Cursed by Thomas Wheeler with illustrations by Frank Miller. Cursed is a reimagining of King Arthur, which is why I'm going to be reimagining some books into different genres today. Do you like retellings? Do you like illustrations? Do you like Netflix? Do you like revenge stories? Do you like King Arthur? Well, I've got the book for you! Cursed by Thomas Wheeler with illustrations by Frank Miller. This book follows a girl named Nimue who is looking to get revenge on the people who slaughtered her village. She's given the mission of reuniting an ancient sword with a legendary sorcerer, and she's the last hope for her people even though her people despised her. She's putting all differences aside that she had with her village in hopes of getting revenge. Not only does the story sound solid, it's also full of brilliant, life-changing, beautiful, drool-worthy pictures. Like look at this, and this, and this, and this, and finally this. It's in life libraries and bookstores now. It's the Booksplosion Book of the Month for the month of November, which should be reason enough to pick it up. It's also being turned into a Netflix series starring Katherine Langford, who was also in 13 Reasons Why, so that's pretty dope. If it sounds interesting to you, then ch ch check it out. So today, I've picked out five books that I'm going to be reimagining into different genres. Basically, I'm just giving you guys some prompts for some fan fiction that you should write. If there are any fan fiction writers watching this video, then take these ideas and run with them, please. And once you're done with them, please send them to me. I need to read them. Let's do this thing. First up, we've got Harry Potter. Now, I know that we've gotten some iffy things related to the Harry Potter series, since its release, aka information we don't need, like how wizards used to relieve themselves wherever they stood because Hogwarts didn't always have bathrooms. You're telling me that you're not gonna give me a series on the Marauders, but you're gonna instead tell me that wizards used to poop their pants. Hard pass. We've also gotten The Cursed Child, which was either a hit or a miss, depending on who you talked to, but since you're talking to me, just know that it was a miss. So since I can't get anything that I want, then I'm just gonna reimagine Harry Potter into a new genre, and that genre is sci-fi. Harry Potter in space. I mean, Come on, how epic does that sound? The story of Harry Potter is already an epic story, so why not chuck the characters into space and let them have at it? Instead of wands, they'd use lightsabers. Wait, is this just gonna end up being Star Wars? Confession time! I've only ever watched the first Star Wars and I fell asleep during it. Don't hate me! Please don't slay me with your lightsabers. I promise I'll watch all of them someday, even if that means I have to tape my eyes open. Harry, Ron, and Hermione will be attending Space Wars, the school of Starcraft and Spacery. Together they embark on adventures in space, but the one big adventure that they take on together is going up against the Dark Lord of Space, Voldemort, who in this reimagined version of the story is a robot. A robot that has malfunctioned and has formed an army of people that wants to go against the space government and take them down and completely take over space. He's also put, um, Harry Potter spoiler ahead. Skip to this timestamp to miss the spoiler. Spoiler in three, two, one. He puts chips with his data on it into seven different things. That way if he's defeated, he can just be brought back to life. It's up to Harry, Ron, and Hermione to defeat him, but the longer they put it off, the more powerful he becomes. Will this space trio be able to take him down? Why does this sound so good to me? I mean, maybe it's because just the story of Harry Potter is so good in general. So of course it's like the same story in space. It's gonna sound great. It also is a little dumb sounding, I will admit, but I need it. Honestly, somebody write the fan fiction and send it to me so I can read it. Police. I would do it, but I'm too lazy. Next up, we've got the archived duology. This one just like completely hit me when I was looking at my bookshelf and thinking of books that I want reimagined, I was like, the archive as a contemporary story. Even though it's already a little bit of a contemporary story, just like a hint of magic, a layer of magic, if you will. Like if you were to peel off that layer of magic, it would literally just be a contemporary story because it's set in the real world. There's just some magical things happening. Basically, this duology is about a girl named Mackenzie who works for the Library of the Dead. Sometimes the dead slip into the real world and it's Mackenzie's job to fetch them and bring them back to the Library of the Dead. Since it seems like we're not getting a third book anytime soon, though I still have my heart set on the 
Victoria releasing one at some point. I'll just make a new version of the archived. It's fine. Now, I don't know why this one hit me in the way that it did, because the reimagined concept that I have come up with for this book is weird. But y'all already know how weird my brain is. Like, if you've been subscribed for a while, you know. You are in the know. Things tend to get a little weird up in here. I see a rebrand in the near future. Jesse the Weird Reader. <clears throat> so this is my reimagining of the archived. Mackenzie is going to a school that is completely infested with rats. And the principal is trying to hide it from the students, the students' parents, and the teachers. Talk about being responsible. Who needs honesty when you can just lie? Ooh, that sounded like every YA character ever. The reason he wants to hide it instead of openly admit it is because he caused the rat problem. His pet rats that he had in the office got loose, and he did his best to track them down, but they continued to get away from him, and the next thing he knew, they kept having rat babies and formed an army of rats. So the principal hires Mackenzie to become a rat keeper and catch every rat in the school. The principal wants no harm done to these rats because they used to be his pets, so he still loves them, which is why he's turning to Mackenzie and not rat control. So Mackenzie must get her hands on them and return them without fellow students, students' parents, or teachers finding out. I told y'all it was gonna be weird and hopefully it delivered. I literally looked at the book on my bookshelf and that's what I came up with right away. Like I had no hesitation in thinking up this new reimagined version of the archive. Like it just came to me. Rats. Why rats? How did that pop into my mind? Why did that pop into my mind? Where did the thought of a rat infestation come to mind when I looked at this book? I have many questions for myself and I don't even have the answers for myself. Gotta ask the big man upstairs what he was thinking about when he wired my brain in the way that he did. Because trust me, he's the only one that could answer that for you. Next we have Frankly in Love. This book follows a boy named Frank Lee who is a Korean American and ends up dating a white girl, which really wouldn't be a problem if his parents were chill about it. But they aren't chill about it. They want him to date a Korean or else they're going to lose their chill, which is exactly what happened to his sister. To hide his relationship, he ends up in a fake dating scenario. Now this one came to me as I was looking at my bookshelves. I saw Frankly in Love, then I saw The Cruel Prince, and then I saw The Beautiful, and I was like, ding, 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 bingo, B. I-N-G-O. So I began to picture this book as a fantasy, and to my surprise, it worked. So, in this reimagined version of Frankly in Love, we follow this boy who is a fae, and his parents only want him to date a fae girl. But one day, he's walking in the parking lot of his school, and he noticed that a car was coming at him, spinning out of control, and then suddenly this girl rushed in front of him, pushed him up against his car, and put her hand out, stopping the car that was coming at him. Wait, why does this sound so familiar? Twilight! The situation made the fae's heart do a little pitter-patter, but he realized that the girl was a vampire, a full-on bloodsucker. But he couldn't help it, his heart wants what it wants. And so they start going out in the shadows, and the Fae has made a deal with the Fae girl to put on this fake dating scenario for his parents. And there we have our reimagined version of Frankly in Love. I feel like it needs a new title though, like Fae Clee in Love. Because he's Fae and he's faking being in love with the Fae girl. Aha! <laughs> a, A, A. Next up, we've got the Throne of Glass series. At first I was like, this would work great as a contemporary story because there is so much drama. There's literally drama coming from every direction, specifically on the relationship side of things. There's also friendship drama, family drama, business drama, I guess you could say. And all of that would translate really well in a realistic fiction scenario. But then I was thinking about it and I didn't know how it would translate everything else, like the assassin plotline at the beginning and some of the magical things that come into play throughout the story. So that's why I'm thinking horror, because the series overall already has some kind of horror-esque things happening, kind of, not really. Shh, we're going with it. And that way we can have a happy medium of a realistic fiction story and a horror story. So we'll set it in a boarding school, and we've got this it girl by the name of Selena. Little does everybody know, but she is not who she says she is. She's been through a lot in life, but she wants to keep that to herself. She's been dating left and right, which nothing wrong with that, just trying to find her ride or die, and she feels that the school she's attending has become a little bit overbearing in terms of the policies that they've been setting for the students. The principal has pretty much taken away all their rights, and she's not gonna just sit around and wait for graduation, nuh uh. She's gonna take him out. She's convinced all her friends to help her out and help cover her tracks in hopes of potentially getting away with it. But things quickly go south and now law enforcement are after her. Will she be able to go up against them and save her fellow students? Only time will tell. That seemed like such a stretch. At least the other ones that I've talked about so far have had details of the original story, but I feel like this one is just like a completely different story. It's just kind of hard to transform it into the horror genre. I guess it could possibly work as like a dystopian as well because it kind of has a similar vibe to that genre in some ways. 
Dragons. Maybe even sci-fi would work. Lastly, we have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I thought it would be interesting if this book mostly stayed the same, but just had a layer of magic added on top of it. Basically, this book is about a girl named Kath who is off at college, and she's just really trying to figure out everything, like where she fits at college, and just who she is as a person. And on top of all of this, she also runs an online fan fiction that's super popular. It's poppin'. So my twist on this story, my reimagined version of this story, is basically while Kath is writing this fan fiction, it begins to come true and play out in real time. And we get to see that happen. While we're seeing Kath's story, we're also seeing Simon and Baz's story, which is kind of what already happens in Fangirl. We do get to see bits and pieces of Simon and Baz's story, but in this book, it's actually happening. Kath herself is unaware of the fact that the things that she is writing begin to actually happen in the real world, that this fantastical fan fiction is becoming true. That is until this security footage from a grocery store goes viral of a boy walking around the grocery store with wings. When she sees this viral video, she kind of puts two and two together and realizes that that character matches the description of the character she's writing about. She doesn't even really remember the last scene that she wrote in her book because she was just kind of doing some free writing. She realizes that she wrote a scene of a character going to a grocery store just for the fun of it. She then writes out a scene of her meeting the characters just to see what might happen, and to her surprise, that's what happens. She ends up meeting Simon and Baz. She meets them and realizes that she has the ability to write herself out of reality and write herself into fiction. She must choose to live this mundane life that she's been living, or she can continue to write a new fictional life for herself with fictional characters. I want to read that so bad. I know that there are books that are similar to that, but I want to read this one with Kath, Simon, and Baz. Give it to me. I need it. All right, guys. So those were five books that I put into different genres. This video was so fun for me. I really enjoyed the process of like putting these books into different genres and what they might look like, even if some of them didn't really work out that well. Let me know in the comments down below a book that you would like to see be reimagined into a new genre and what that genre would be. Again, thanks to Simon and Schuster for sponsoring this video. Cursed is in stores now, so be sure to check it out if it sounds interesting to you. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye-o!